thing. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for such a nice crowd today on the first Sunday of 2014. And Lord, I thank you that we don't have to make New Year's resolutions, Father. I thank you that we just have to make commitments. And we have to reevaluate our lives and where we are and what we're doing and, and what is our life, Father. And I thank you for the opportunity to do that. And I ask you just to guide me this morning as I go through some of the scriptures that you've put on my heart. And I ask you just to, you say your word will not return void. And I trust you to do that, Father. So, Lord, I ask you to just oversee everything that's said and done. And cause our ears to be open and our hearts to be open to receive your word, Father. And, Lord, I know you want this to be a church that turns our part of the world upside down for Jesus, Father, just like the disciples did. And I see it coming to pass, Father. I see you bringing it about. And it thrills my heart, Father. So let this word be a little part of pushing that along, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Uh, how many of you know what's wrong with our world today? This is not what I'm going to preach about, but it's something God put on my heart to, to talk about a little bit. Uh, you know, there's a couple of scriptures that, uh, that, that speak directly to it. Uh, Psalms 33, 12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And the main thing that's wrong with our country today is complacency and, and uh, neglect and laziness, I don't know what all adjective to use, but of the body of Christ, we're complacent. We have sat here for years and years and years and allowed people to take God out of our country. And our country is no longer considered to be one nation under God by most of the people in our country or in the world. And, uh, and God blessed our country more than, than any country's ever been blessed. And God set this country up to be a blessing. And we have allowed it practically to be taken away from us. And uh, if you want to hear a sermon that, uh, that will explain it to you in more detail, uh, you can go to gatewaypeople.com and go to their archives, their, their sermons by year, and pick out the first sermon of January 2012. And it's James Robinson, or Robinson, Robinson I guess it is. Uh, he's preaching at uh, Gateway Church. And he tells you exactly, and he, this was a year ago, and it's more applicable now than it was a year ago even. But uh, if you want to know what's wrong with our world and what the fix is, uh, you can go listen to that if you like. But there's another scripture in uh, John uh, 17, verse 20. It's Jesus talking. Uh, he says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That's us, along with them. He's talking about us. He says, I don't pray for these, but I'm praying for you guys at Cowboys for Jesus in 2014. Uh, and he says, uh, who believe in me through their word that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. They also may be one in us, and here's the key phrase, that the world may believe that you sent me. That's what's wrong with our country. The church fell down on its job. We haven't preached Jesus. We haven't preached personal relationship. We haven't been bold enough to stand up against the folks that say this is no longer a Christian country. And we allowed it to get to the place where they could say that. It's our fault. Nobody's fault but ours, the Christian community, the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and we're the only ones that can turn it around. A house divided against itself cannot stand. How many of you know our country's divided against itself in a huge way? Amen. It's not just divided in half. It's divided in slivers, okay? And we're the only ones that can change it. If every church, in, if half of the churches in America were to get serious with God, and, and every, even 50% even of the members of each church were to get serious with God and dedicate and commit their lives to serving the living God, no matter what their occupation was, no matter how they make their living, commit themselves to spreading the word and the kingdom of God, we could change this world. 
But that's all that'll change it, okay? Uh, but it says that, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them, you in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved me as, and, and have loved them as you have loved me. When we act like the church, lost people and backslidden people will know that God loves them the same way he loves Jesus. Amen? Uh, there's probably going to be some more of that somewhere, but, uh, but I think we have to wake up and smell the roses and realize that it's our complacency and our lack of, of being disciplined and dedicated to God's Word. And I'm so excited about this course that Dennis is teaching, and I'm so glad God brought him to teach it. And I'd, I'd like to see, I mean, you know, how, how many of y'all could sit through two services on a Sunday? Hello? I, I'd like to see this many at that class and then this many stay for this service. I don't know how long that's going to last. Uh, Dennis and I didn't talk about how long it would take to go through that series, but, but uh, I know he is, he's been to Bible school, and I know he's, he knows what he's doing, and he knows how to do it, okay? I was going to try to do it because he wasn't available, but he made himself available to come do it, and he'll do a much better job of it than I would. So we need to really be grateful. Uh, amen. Uh, I, I gotta tell you guys now. You know, I used to have a bad reputation for preaching too long, and I, you know, I've corrected that. I preach really short sermons now, by comparison, by comparison, okay. But I worked on it. I really did, and I've done. I've, I've helped it a little bit. But I was asked this morning, okay. I was asked. I want you to know that. I'm so glad that Ben took up a little time here because I was afraid I was going to really be in trouble. But I was asked to keep it going till at least 12.15 or 12.30 because with this crowd and with all of these beautiful young ladies here, amen? I counted 17. You, you must have picked up, you must have, no, I didn't count any though. Maybe I did. Okay, let's don't argue about it. <laughs> anyway. 15? 15? Yeah, you probably do. <laughs> anyway, uh, our guys had to go out and, and secure a little bit more grub to be sure that we could fill these girls up and give them plenty to eat and have some left over for us. Because our policy is if you're visiting with us, uh, you don't have to bring anything. We want you to stay anyway, okay? And we're going to see to it that there's enough food, okay? So if we go to 1230, don't blame me. Uh, I really don't know exactly what, what this message is about. I know that it's the new year, and, uh, and I know God gave me a bunch of scriptures, but uh, uh, we're just going to go through the scriptures and see where he takes us. You know, I think it could be about our country. I think it could be about our individual lives. I think it could be about our church. And, uh, and all of those things fit together under one umbrella, you know? If, if you study and, and you become uh, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, and if you get your life sold out to God and you surrender to him and you forgive everybody that you've got all against and, and you really start living the Christian life and the one next to you starts doing that and, and then the next one starts doing that and we get all connected in a right way and we get all of our, our hurts, habits, and hang-ups dealt with and put to bed, uh, then, then what happens to this body? Yeah, woo! Yeah, okay? But you see, if our church does it, and another church does it, and another church does it, and another church does it, what happens to our country? That's the only way, that's the only way our country's going to survive, is if we sell out our hearts to God and go to work bringing your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the only way this country's going to survive. And uh, uh, anyway, look at Matthew 24, verse 3. 
And I've got a lot of scripture. I may not use all of it. And I just pray God will lead me. Uh, Matthew 24. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. Do y'all know that we everyone need to take heed that no one deceives us? How many of y'all think you possibly might could be deceived in one little area of your life? Well, the rest of you are deceived because you don't know you're deceived. Uh, I listened to that sermon of James Robinson, and one of the things he said, he talked about when, when he was a, a stumbling preacher that was, was being very successful but not fulfilling his full purpose in God, and, and he had to go through some deliverance and some life-changing stuff, and, and he met with Billy Graham to call Billy Graham down, down about something that he was doing because he thought he was God's corrector. And, uh, and so Billy Graham straightened him out on a few things, and, and, and Billy Graham says, uh, James, you know, the only thing that you can be sure of is that you're not right about everything. <laughs> and, uh, and that changed James's life. But it'll change our life, too, if we aren't so dead sure that we know everything and we're right about everything. Amen? Amen. And if we could learn to tolerate each other's differences, uh, you know, if there's some place that you think I'm wrong about something and you can love me anyway, uh, you know, it's a better world. But I've got to do the same thing to you, you know, if you believe something that's different from me. But you know what happens when people, when you run into that situation? You know what happens? You think I'm wrong about something and you come tell me. Not, not you. I mean, y'all are all perfect sheep, you know. Y'all are all perfect people. But we've had some that come and they disagree with something I said, you know, and they come and they tell me, you know, you're wrong about this. It's this way and this way and this way. And I say, well, you know, I'm sorry, I, I can't agree with you, but can you show me in the Word? And they say, well, yeah, everybody knows it. And, and so uh, I say, well, pray for me that I'll, that I'll come to understand it, you know. And they'll come tell me two or three times, and if I don't agree with them, they're gone, you know. And they're not searching for truth. They're searching for agreement with what they believe that may be wrong. I, heard, I saw a survey one time that said uh, the average person that leaves a church does not leave searching for truth. They leave searching for some place that agrees with what they learned when they were five years old. And if you're searching for agreement, you can find it. But if you're searching for truth, you've got to stand face to face with those that you disagree with in a right way. And y'all got to wrestle it out till you come to agreement, till you find out what you, if, if, you, if we don't agree, one of us is wrong. And I'll gladly admit to you that I can be wrong, but I can't change where I'm wrong until God shows it to me. Just because you tell me, I can't change it. But I've got to study it out. And the same with you. If you believe something that I disagree with, I can't condemn you for it. I, I gotta keep preaching what I think God showed me that's right. And, and I pray frequently, God, if I'm wrong somewhere, show me. I don't want to be wrong. I don't want to teach or preach something that's not the absolute truth of God. But how many of you know that we're not all perfect in that area? But we have to give each other grace, okay? Grace is a wonderful thing unless she throws you. <laughs> Y'all know why I'm wearing the vest, right? You know, uh, I, I wasn't going to say anything about that, but my wife told one person, and everybody's asked me this morning, well, are you okay? My horse threw me yesterday, and I had to wear suspenders because the, the, worst, the worst hurts right here where my belt is, and uh, so, <laughs> yeah, me too. Anyway, I woke y'all up. Where was I? See that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name. I am the Christ, and will, will, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. Uh, see that you're not troubled. How many of you have heard of wars and rumors of wars? How many know there's skirmishes all over the world? So you think that means that we're in the end times? Oh, yes. Huh? Okay. Uh, well, it says, it says, you know, uh, see that you're not troubled. It says, uh, for these things must come 
to pass. But the end is not yet. See, there's a lot of people in this world going around as if the end is tomorrow or next week or next month. And you know, our, our, do y'all think our economic system could collapse anytime in the next 10 to, to 100 and 365 days? You think it's possible? You think it will happen? Are you worried about it? Good. Keep not worrying about it or stop worrying about it and get busy getting the kingdom of God right here in our lives. Amen. Whoever that is, thank you, Susie. Uh, the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. See, I mean, you, you, you've seen some, some kingdom against kingdom, hadn't you? And you've seen some pestilence and some, some earthquakes. They're, they're, we're seeing more and more of that, aren't we? But, but it says it's only the beginning, Okay. I think there's a mentality around that, uh, that you know, we got, we, there's nothing wrong with being prepared. How many of you think there's anything wrong with being prepared for some bad times? But what if you devote your life to it? What if you're so concerned that you're storing up stuff to take care of you and, you know, 20 other people and, and keep be making sure that nobody can come in and take it from you? You think that's the way to live? They got a show on TV that's about nothing but that, and the links that people go to to do that are astonishing. I only watched it for a couple of sessions, and, and I thought, man, that's crazy. You know, they're, they're wasting their life preparing for something that won't do them any good. Because when it happens, there's only one thing that'll save you through it, and you know what that is? The Lord Jesus Christ and the power of God in your life and knowing him in such a personal way that, that you can trust him to take care of you. Okay? We've got to get our focus right. We've, if we don't do anything else at the start of this year except change our focus and change our priorities and, and make God the center of our life, then if that's all we do, that'll be something, won't it? And, and I don't care who you are or how, how, how much you're trying to serve God, you can still be a little out of focus. And there can still be stuff. The only thing you can be sure of is that you don't know everything and that you got some things wrong. Isn't that comforting? Yeah. Hello? Comforted me to know I wasn't the only one. Verse 9 says, Then they will deliver you up to tribulation or kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended. How many of y'all are offended about something? Nobody? All right. You, I know a lot of y'all are offended about something. Some of you are probably offended at me and you're offended at each other and somebody's done something to hurt your feelings and you're offended. We get offended about a lot of stuff, don't we? Well, I don't know that that's the kind of offended it's talking about. It's talking about being offended by God, I think. Because they're going to be offended just because somebody mentions God's name. And we got some of that. We got leaders in our country that are or offended by anything having to do with God, okay? But that's going to happen, and it's going to, but, but, you know, the time's coming when they're just going to go out and kill you just because you're a Christian, indiscriminately. Right? Well, I know they are in some places, uh, but, but I'm talking about in our country, in the United States of America. We haven't seen that yet, I don't think. Uh, not blatantly, anyway. Uh, but, but it's going to happen. Uh, and I'm not trying to scare you. I, well, I am trying to scare you. I'm trying to scare you into having faith in God and knowing that God's the only thing that can save us when these things happen and, and, and getting that kind of faith in Him is the only thing that can change our country and give us a few more years uh, to, to, to go ahead and turn our whole country to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and get everybody in our country coming back to the place where we're proud to be a country, one nation under God. Uh, it says, uh, the love of many will grow cold. Verse 13. Uh, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. 
Uh, and that word endure, I, I want to spend a minute on that. I may not get very far today. Uh, I, I want to spend a minute on that word endure. The, the, the Strong's number is 5278, and all it says is that it's from two other words. Uh, and, and I don't know that I can pronounce the words, but, but one of those words means to stay under, to remain, to undergo, to have fortitude to preserve. Those are the definitions of that, that word endure. That's one half of the definition, okay? You want to know what the other half is? The other half is a word that's uh, Strong's number is 3306. And uh, I can't pronounce it either. It's, it's minnow something. But it's a, it's a verb to stay in a given place, state, relationship, or expectancy. That's what it means to endure. Stay in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthening it all the time and growing in your knowledge of him and your love for him. That's what it means to endure. Don't be complacent. Don't just say, well, yeah, he's out there and he came for me to have an abundant life, so I'm going to run around doing all the stuff that I enjoy doing and all the stuff I like doing. Uh, and, and some of us are doing that in some ways, you know. Uh, it's real easy to get into being just caught up in life and in yourself. But what did Jesus say? He said, if you lose your life for my sake, you find it. And, and a lot of people are, are hunting life. They're hunting uh, happiness and joy and peace through all kinds of stuff. You know, I used to, I used to love to play racquetball. I used to, to love to go boating. And, and looking back, I can see that, that I used to, well, we won't go into all that stuff I used to love to do. But... <laughs> But, uh, but I, used to, I didn't realize at the time, but looking back, I can see I was doing those things to, to fill a void in my life. And it didn't work. How many of you know it doesn't work? Never works. But if we lose that stuff, if we lose our life for his sake, you find it. And I can vouch for that 100,000%. Because when I really found my place in God, my purpose in God. I have, I have not experienced anything prior to, to about uh, 2001 or 2000, somewhere in there. Uh, I have not found anything that fulfilled me the way that God's purpose and destiny does. Uh, and that is where life is, is finding God's purpose and having a purpose that you know is from Him. And that's what we need to do the first of this year instead of making resolutions. We need to say, God, show me your purpose for my life and give some meaning to my life. Uh, I've done uh, several funerals in the last three weeks. And, uh, and it's, it's usually part of, of my funeral services to, to speak to the, the ones that are still here about their purpose. The scripture says it's in uh, Ecclesiastes. It says, you know, the, the day of one's death is better than the day of one's birth because that makes you think about yourself. Take note of your own self. When, when someone close to you dies, you can't help but think, well, gosh, I wonder how long I've got and I wonder what, what my life's worth. And when you find somebody that's really made an impact on other people, then it's accentuated all the more because it makes you think about what am I doing with my life? And what are, what are people going to say about me when I'm gone? Have you done something that's, that's really going to make people know that you left a mark on this earth, in this world? Or have you just lived through it, just kind of brain dead, just taking everything one day at a time as it comes and doing whatever felt good with it and doing what you wanted to do and doing what made you feel good without regard to how it made somebody else feel. I'm not stepping on any toes, I hope. Huh? But we, any one of us, can affect other people's life in a significant way if we lose our own life, lay down our life, lay down my needs, my wants, my fun desires, my 
my hobbies and stuff. And that don't mean you have to give up everything. Uh, I'm still going to find me a horse that don't buck, and I'm still going to ride, or I'm going to get somebody to teach this one not to buck, okay? But uh, I've been riding horses for, I don't know, 15 years, I guess. I had never been bucked off of one. I've fallen off, and I've fallen getting on them, and I've had all kind of little wrecks, but I ain't never been bucked off before. And uh, anyway, I'm not going to quit that, but I've got to keep that in perspective. Okay, I can't let that rule my life because I've laid my life down for Jesus. And when I did, I found more life than I ever knew existed. But I can still make time to have fun, and life becomes more fun when it's all about Jesus and some of the same activities. But sometimes we just don't go to the same extreme in those activities when we really start focusing on what's his purpose for our life and how can I impact the people in the world around me. Uh, okay, so if we're supposed to endure to the end, and, and one other thing before I leave that scripture, you know, we always get to the end of that and it says, and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached all to, in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. And I've had people tell me that... Uh, you know, well, that's already been done, so he can come any time. Well, I know he can come whenever he wants to, but I, for one, don't believe that, that it's been preached everywhere to all nations everywhere in the world. I'm not at all sure that that's happened. And, and if I'm sitting around waiting for him to come and trusting that he'll get everybody saved that he won't save, and I'm not doing my part, how many of you think that's right? He said, occupy till I come. He said, keep on keeping on. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. And, and I'm so excited about this class because so many of us are excited about that. And, and the more we study and the more we learn, the more it changes your life and the more he can flow through you to other people's lives. Jan and I have done a lot of ministry and a lot of counseling, and, and people, you know, sometimes people are having problems, and I say, well, why don't you come talk to us? Well, you're so busy. We don't, we don't want to come, you know, bother you. Well, hogwash, that's what we like to do. You know I mean? We, we get pleasure out of seeing your life change, and we've had the opportunity to counsel with quite a few people. And, and I don't think I'd still be here doing this because it's a lot of work. I don't know if you know how hard preachers work, but, uh, you know, this isn't all we do is just, you know, one couple hours on Sunday morning. But it's work. And, and we're going to talk about some of that as we get more down the road this month, getting ready for working for volunteers and showing you all things that need to be done. Because I need some stuff taken off of me so I can relax and, and be available to do more counseling and more other things. I need some help, okay, in a serious way. So we'll be talking about that. But... But the fact is, is if I hadn't seen lives change, I doubt seriously that, that I would have had the stamina to keep on keeping on. But watching just one life, just this little life, you know, right here. I, I had a little bitty part in encouraging her and, and loving on her and, and just being there for her. And, and I mean, I didn't do a whole lot. Jesus did it all. But he did some of it through me. And seeing the change in this girl's life, has, I mean, it blesses me. It, 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 it invigorates me. It energizes me. It keeps me going. So if you've got a problem, don't hesitate to call. And, and that's one of the other things we've got to do as we get ready to grow as a church. We've got to raise up some other people that are counselors. We need a, a prayer group, a, a group that's, that's ready to come up here and pray when people are up here. We've got some organization to do. We've got some changing and some planning to do. How many of y'all want to be a part of a really alive, growing church? Okay? Well, I've, I've led the best I know how, but there's a lot of areas that I've done a sloppy job at, okay? And I recognize it, and I'm doing my best to change it. I need your help to help me change it, okay? And I'm going to try to lead better, and I'm going to try to communicate better, and we're going to try to set up classes where we can teach you. So what Dennis said something this morning. 
about uh, people that send you out to do a job and don't properly equip you for it. Well, you know, <laughs> he hit the nail on the head, you know. I'd already figured that out, and I was already aware of it, but it kind of hurt when he said it. And, and I've got to do better at that. We, I think if we all do a little better at a few things, I, I don't think there'll be any stopping, you know. I, I think, I just, uh, I wish I knew exactly what God wanted to do, but I don't. But I know that he's wanting to move through this body, okay? And it's not about me. It's not about Jan. It's not really about any single one of you. It's about all of us together coming to be one in him so that the world will know that the Son of God came to this earth to save men. Amen? Amen. That's what it's about, and that's where we've got to get to. And I don't care what kind of problem you're having in your life, if you focus off of that problem and on to becoming one with, in your family and then one within this body and then one with other churches... That's the answer. That's the big answer. Amen? I hadn't even got off of one scripture yet. Are, you, are y'all hungry yet? Yes. Well, we might get there. I mean, I got, um, that's, that's just the first scripture. <laughs> the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's the absolute truth. Uh, so what do we, what do, we do, uh, you know, if, if we really want to endure and we really want to accomplish what God wants us to do? Don't y'all worry. I still got 16, 17 minutes before, before lunch will be ready, okay? Uh, but look at Matthew 5, verse 13. Now, I, I don't want to add to or take away from the Word of God, but... Um, and I know that all Scripture is breathed by God and it's profitable, but it says you are the salt of the earth. Uh, if I had written it with all the people that I know that profess to be Christians, I think I would have said you should be the salt of the earth. Y'all forgive me for that, right? But you are salt. We are the salt of the earth. That's what it says. Uh, you are the salt of the earth, but... If the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Amen to that. Then it's only good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. So are you, are you acting? You are salt. But are you good salt? Or are you salt that's only good for paving the road? Hello? I mean, from the way I'm reading that, I, I think you can be salt and be saved. And, and be going to heaven and have a little old bitty shack way out in the South 40 somewhere. Uh, or you can be good salt and you can be used. And God can use you and work through you and, and touch people through you. And, and then you'll have a little bigger house a little closer in or something. You know, there are rewards in heaven. You know, we don't earn anything down here. But, but the more we're salt, I think the closer you're going to be into the throne when you get there. Amen? Uh, it's good for nothing except to be trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. We had a, we had a prophetic word a long time ago that this church would be a light in, in this area. I don't remember exactly what it was. Jan could probably tell you. But, but it says we're going to be a light, and, and a trumpet's going to sound in Fisher, Texas. And we're going to be part of that, okay? And God's getting us ready. And I hope that, that all of us are wanting to be part of that and that we have understanding that God's wanting to do that. And the trumpet would be heard throughout the county. And the trumpet would be heard throughout the county. Um, you are the light of the world, and a city is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Uh, but it, but there's, there's a little caveat here in verse 16. It says, let, let your light so shine before men 
that they may see your good works. And, and that good works, we can't get caught up in thinking that if we work harder around the church and if we do more that it buys us something from God and makes God pleased with it. That good works is studying to show yourself approved. It's allowing God to flow through you. It's, it's loving people and having compassion on people and, and being ready at all times to give an account of the faith that's in you. That's, that's what it's about. And that's what it's for. And we've got to get on that, on that page if we want to, to, to make something out of our church and to salvage our world and to be what God wants us to be. Uh, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Uh, and in Matthew 6, 22, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness. You know, there's a lot of people in this world that are walking around thinking that they're saved. Uh, and they're not. Because salvation is a relationship. It's not a, a certificate. It's not a baptism. Uh, you know, I talk to people all the time and I ask them about their relationship with God. And they say, well, you know, I was baptized. And I say, well, when were you baptized? And they say, well, I was baptized in a baby. And uh, how many of you know a baby doesn't know what's going on? And how many of you know that babies are protected up until they know right and wrong anyway? That's in Romans if you want to read it. Uh, but at some point, you have to make your own choice, your own decision to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and to, to thank Him for dying for your sins on the cross and to tell Him you want Him to live in you and be your Savior. Now, you don't have to say all those words because it's a condition of your heart, okay? Okay. But it says, Whoever shall call upon, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord might be saved, shall be saved. So the words that you say are not as important as the condition of your heart to recognize Him as God, as God's Son that came to this world to die for your sins and to save your soul and to live in you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit when, when you tell Him that, when you surrender to Him. He comes in. He lives inside of you. And He wants to flow out from you. He wants to, to be and do all the stuff that He bees and does. That ain't good English. <laughs> through you, okay? Whether it's good English or not, it's the truth. That's what He wants to do. But you have to let Him. You have to, first of all, get in a relationship with Him. Then you have to let Him. And then if you study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, then you've got the Word. I, sure, I wanted so many times to... to to speak out when Dennis was teaching this morning, I had to restrain myself because everything he said, man, I just, it just supercharged me. And, and there's things, you can, you can always add something a little different way, but I had to pinch myself to keep my mouth shut and not interfere with what he was teaching. But, um, but when it's in you, it can flow out. And, and if you don't get the word in you, you can still be saved. But you're not going to have as victorious a life. You're not going to have as much fun in life. You're not going to have... Uh, as much joy and peace and all of that stuff. And, and there's going to be people that God will have to stir somebody else up to touch that he brought to you to be touched, and you didn't touch them because you didn't have the word in you. That's a sad thing for you. It's sometimes a good thing for me because sometimes I get to pick up where somebody else didn't do it, and I have fun, okay? I don't believe God will let anybody go to hell because one of us didn't do our job because he's a loving God. And if he wrote your name in the book before the foundations of the earth, then, you know, I don't think you got a lot of choices. You, he's going he's gonna to get you there. It's just how long you drag your feet, you know. If there's any choices, it's, it's how long we go before we surrender. Amen? Because we got an awesome, mighty God. Yeah, that's amen. Uh, verse 24 gets kind of personal here. 
He said, but if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Now, I don't know if there's any reason that that's right before the next verse. But it says, no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot, cannot serve God and mammon. Now, that's a pretty deep verse. But it's true. And, and so many people think they're serving God, and, uh, but they're really caught up in selfishness and self-centeredness, and they're really more worried about their pocketbook and their, their stuff and, and, and protecting themselves for the future. And, you know, I, I've been caught up in some of that myself. Even in recent times, God's convicted me of some things that I need to be doing uh, in that area that, uh, that I haven't been perfect at. And, and God doesn't condemn you. He just tells you so that you can have more fun. Okay? And I'm not condemning you either, but I'm telling you, some of you might need to take note and, and determine, you know, are you really more attached to your mammon, whatever that is in your life, whatever that looks like, than you are to God? Have you got something that if God told you to give it away, you wouldn't do it? Be careful, he'll test you. What's the old saying? Uh, good news and the bad news. The good news is we've got plenty of money to pay off our bank note and, and really be able to function really, really well in, uh, in our economic system here in Cowboys for Jesus. That's the good news. The bad news, it's in y'all's pocket and some of you haven't turned loose of any of it. <laughs> We're going to be talking about that in the future too, okay? A church, a church, that, a church that, that God is in and a church that God's moving through and a church that God ordained and put here, which I believe he did, should not have to worry with paying their bills. And on occasion, we have a little trouble making ends meet, and one of the reasons is because we didn't pay as we went and we've got a bank note and if we didn't have that banknote, we would be on easy street with our checkbook. And, and we've got folks around here. I didn't intend to go here. But uh, we've got folks around here that, uh, that are making peanuts instead of a decent wage. And they're working because they're called, but they have to make sacrifices to, to get it done. And, uh, and, and the reason that, that we were in that situation is not because you have a preacher that's making a whole bunch of money, because I chose to, to be a volunteer and to not draw any salary for the last 12 years. And so I'm not taking it out. Uh, we're not putting it in fast enough. And, and maybe we were a little out of line when we got a bank note and we shouldn't have. We'd probably still be building the building if we hadn't. But, uh, but God might have provided so see, we all got to learn, we all got to grow, but we all got to get more involved if we want this church to be what God wants it to be. I hope I said that in a nice way, did I? Yes. Amen. Good, that means y'all are going to step up a little bit then. Uh, you cannot serve two masters. Uh, one more, Mark four twenty four. Oh, this goes right with it, that's good. Mark 4, 20. Then he said to them, Now I say to you, take heed. Take heed. With the same measure that you measure it out, you get it back with the same measure. You using a teaspoon when you give, whether it's of yourself, whether it's of your finances, or, or whether it's of other things that you have that people need. Uh, someone gave a, a person a car here recently, and I was so excited about that. Uh, and they needed a car. And I know they felt really good when they did it. And I'd be willing to tell you that they're probably going to get something really special back because that's, that's a measure. See, when you give a car to somebody and it's a good car, you know, a lot of people give away cars that are junk. But when you give away a good car, 
you're going to get a blessing back. I don't, I don't know exactly what, how, when, or where. But whatever measure you give, it comes back. The same measure. So if you want to be stingy, and you want to just put a little bit of whatever it is, whether it's your service, whether it's your time, whether it's your money, whatever it is, if you want to put just a little bit in, that's okay. But don't expect to get back a lot. Because you're only going to get back a little bit. And I'm going to tell you this because God's dealing with me and it's, you know, still. My wife's always wanted to, to give away the farm. And I've always been a little, hold back on a little bit. But he's, he's, he's telling me she's right, you're wrong. So. All that, all that sweet stuff I said about you. I think maybe we better quit. I hope the kitchen's ready. They ought to be. How many of y'all glad you came to church this morning? You know, one thing before, before we quit, one thing, we, two things we got to do. Uh, the scripture said, you know, if the light that is in you is darkness, how dark is that light? And, and I said it then, but I'm going to say it again. There are people who kind of think they're saved because they went to church as a kid or they, their parents were saved, so they think, well, I'm saved. Or they, uh, they got baptized as a baby and they think they're saved. And that just doesn't save you. But you need to, to have a time, a moment in time, when you've, you've opened yourself up to God and you've said, God, I, I, I need a Savior. I need you. I want you. And, and the words aren't as important, but if you know in your heart you need Him and that he will, He's the Son of God and that He'll take care of you and He'll do everything He said in the Bible, then you just reach out and say, Lord, I'm calling out on your name. You help me. You come in. You, be my, you, you, you teach me the things I need to know. You show me how to live my life. You cry out to him in any way that he puts in your heart. He will come in. He will save you. And he will dine with you. And he will sup with you right now. He'll turn you into a new creation in Christ Jesus instantly. You become different. Sometimes it takes a long time to work it out all the way. But, but you're instantly changed. You just have to catch up with your brain and your spirit and your soul and everything. You have to catch up to what he turns you into, okay? And you can't get discouraged in that. But if you're here today and you've never trusted him as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you the opportunity right now. I'll just lead you in a simple prayer. I won't embarrass you. I won't make you come up here. But if you'll raise your hand and tell me, I, I know that I'm lost and I need Jesus. And I want him right now. There's one. Anybody else? There's two. Anybody else? Three. Okay. Well, just pray this prayer with me. Just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I need a Savior. I know that you're the Son of God. I know you died for my sins. Please come in and be my Savior and show me how to be what you want me to be. Show me how to be what you created me for. And help me to be the person that you designed me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, my Bible says that you instantly became a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things passed away. Everything before today is gone. Old things passed away. All things become new. And all you got to do is realize that you're a child of God. He loves you. And you got to get into His Word to start learning more about Him. You learn about Him in, in His Word. So start reading His Word. Start reading your Bible. And just every time you read, say, God, show me a little more about yourself. Show me a little more about me. Show me what, what you want me to be. And He will grow you. And He will give you purpose and destiny. And He will change your life. Okay? So how many of you prayed that prayer for the first time and you meant it with all your heart and you're going to serve him all the days of your life? Amen. Hallelujah. The angels in heaven are dancing. I didn't think I could do that. Ooh, hey. Woohoo! It don't even hurt hardly. Amen. Amen. I won't care. You can say anything you want to, Debbie. Hi. 
at CR, we have a lesson one night, and the following week we have a testimony. This coming Thursday, we have a very, very special testimony. A man that's going to get up and tell you what he went through to get to where he's at today, and that's Ben. So we invite you all to come next Thursday, 7 o'clock, here, and to listen to a story. I've heard it before. It's very outstanding. Thank you. Yeah, but it's a true story. Amen. Now, I just want to do one other thing. Y'all know me, and you know that I believe that if God tells you something or God touches your heart with his word, uh, I believe it's good for you to make a commitment to him and acknowledge. So I don't know what the Holy Spirit told any of you today, but how many of you heard something from the Holy Spirit today? Well, I just want us to bow our heads, and if he told you something, I want you to acknowledge to him that he told you. Acknowledge to him that you heard it, and if you really mean it with your whole heart, let him know that you intend to do it. Amen? You know, hearing is, is good, but if you're a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, then you're deceived. But if you're a hearer of the word and you do it, then glorify God. Amen? Let's bow our heads. You just spend a minute with him doing what he told you, confirming with him. Father, I just ask you as each person confirms with you what they heard from your voice this morning, from your spirit, and as they make a commitment to you, Father, I ask you to seal that commitment, and I ask you to just encourage them and remind them to keep that commitment and to be a doer of your word, Father. And Lord, I ask you to keep touching all of us in a significant way so that we keep growing and we keep learning and we keep becoming more of what you want us to be, Father. In Jesus' name. And Lord, bless the food that we're about to partake of and let it give us strength and energy to do your will and to, to do your purpose in our lives, Father. Thank you for such a great day of, of sensing your Holy Spirit among us, Father. In Jesus, And thank you for the great crowd, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. How do you know when you've been to a cowboy church? When the preacher says, y'all come back now, you here? <laughs>